Do you want to move on to uh, this week in Aggie baseball? <laughs> I'm obsessed. I so know, isn't it hilarious? It's, it's all awesome. So Jim Schlossnagel, who used to be the coach at TCU. Good dude. The worst last name ever. I figured you'd probably say that, Blake. <laughs> Uh yeah, just I thought it, you'd say he sucks because didn't he screw over TCU? Uh, I mean, he, he left there. The, he left the program in good hands, and he went to a, a top notch program. But I mean, of all the coaches I've interacted with, especially at coaches shows, like he's legit. A good oh, okay, dude. nice. And he was there for like eighteen years, which I didn't realize. I listened to his whole press conference today, and at one point he said, "Uh, you know, I'm fifty years old," and I'm like, "Oh, I thought he was a little bit older than that." Uh, and then he said, "You know, my eighteen years at TCU." Like, did he get hired at like thirty two? Yeah, I guess so. Thirty three. That seems really weird to me for baseball. Baseball seems like the sport where they hire old coaches more. Guys that look like him. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, obviously, he he left A and M and was hired by Texas pretty much immediately after the last pitch of the College World Series, which Texas A and M lost. And he's all he's a baseball coach, so he's all red assed. <laughs> and there are already rumors out there after Texas had moved on from their coach, that this is the job that he was going to take. He was going to go to Austin. So this is the first clip that went viral was him talking right after they lost. With the rumors circulating today about a specific job opening, what do you have to say about your future in Aggieland? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty selfish of you to ask me that question, to be honest with you. Uh, but my, uh, I left my family to be the coach at Texas A&M. I took the job at Texas A&M to never take another job again. And that By the way, I don't know what he means by that. Why couldn't they just move? Did you do, Did he uh, divorce his wife? There's no there's no way, right? I, I don't think so unless he just didn't want to uproot his kids from Fort Worth. I something. left my family. It's not that That's probably what it is. He just didn't want them to move. Maybe but still because you, they had been going to school there. Yeah. I mean, he was there for a long time. It's not that big of a so, move yeah. though. Like well, you mean, hear about Fort Worth to College Station. Yeah. Right, but I, you hear about like hockey players or whatever that don't want to move their family from Minnesota to California or yeah. whatever. But like within Texas, like, yeah. But if you had been in, this, in the school you can system, know your kids. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Or you know when they're in twelfth or eleventh yeah, grade or whatever. The age yeah. And stuff. At the same time, though, uh, but it made it sound just, like he got divorced. I know, and just like will never talk to his yeah. kids again because he thought the Aggie job was he, so great. Yeah. I left my family to be the coach at Texas A&M. I took the job at Texas A&M to never take another job again. And that hasn't changed in my mind. Um, and that's unfair to talk about something like that. That'd be like you asking Montgomery if he's going to sign in the draft. But Okay, well, first of all, that's one of their players. That would actually be an entirely normal question for a guy who is like – yeah, you're going to ask, hey, you going to come back or are you going to go to the draft? And this is also an entire, entirely normal question, especially considering what just happened. Yeah, yeah. Montgomery, if he's going to sign in the draft. But I understand you got to ask the question. But I gave up a big part of my life to come take this job, and I've poured every ounce of my soul in this job, and I've given this job every single ounce I can possibly give it. So write that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, write that down, Blake. <laughs> that was his write that very, down. Very <laughs> Kim Mulkey, you know? It just nobody has it. And that's a guy from all Texas. These, all these college coaches yeah. are very – they're the same way. Yeah. They are in control of everything. Um, you know, that's why they hate an NIL because mm -hmm. actually the players have a little bit of control now and you can't be a total a-hole. Yeah, but, and it's weird. With Kim Mulkey, at least she was taking aim at the left-wing mainstream or whatever Washington Post coming in and thinking they know what's up. This is a guy from Texas who's probably just written puff piece after puff piece – about Schlossnagel <laughs> the whole time he's been there. And he's like, mm, right, right that. You can just tell he's getting really defensive because oh, he yeah. knows what's happening. he knows it's already happening. He's like, oh, crap. Right. I wasn't prepared to Which, answer this question. In fact, they were like, I've seen rumors about like a burner phone yep. just that he was recruiting Ugh. players. One of his former players, and this is a wild thing to tweet if you don't really have any proof, but uh, former Aggies outfielder J.B. Moss said, more will come out, but recruiting kids to Texas – from burner phones while playing in the national championship is all time greasy. Oh man! But guess what? He's right. I would believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get to his apology to that reporter at the end. But I had a couple of other clips in here I wanted to play for you, uh, including a Dan favorite. Yeah. Good morning. Um, what an awesome day. Super thankful and humbled. By 
Oh, okay. Is this the his Texas press conference? Yeah, then? so now we're going to go to his Texas intro press conference where he does end up apologizing, but that's a long clip. So, But he's humbled by yeah. $8 million a year or whatever he's going to get. He does it a couple times. Super thankful and humbled by this opportunity to be the baseball coach at the University of Texas. I want to thank Texas A&M. This wasn't obviously a move from one school to another school. Uh, this is a great rivalry, and I couldn't be more thankful and, um, what else? and humbled <laughs> by the support that I got there, that we got there. Yeah. He was humbled. humbled by the support, so you were humbled that they – Doubled your pay from what you were making in Fort Worth. Yeah, I, that's, that's the support you got. But that's the opposite of humbled. Like, yeah. if somebody uh, tripled my pay or whatever, I'm feeling like I'm I'm kind of a badass <laughs> if I'm this wanted. Yeah. Like, uh, leave your job and make half of what you made before. Pretty humbling. That's uh, <laughs> possibly humbling. <laughs> uh, this is a favorite from. Uh, this is an old bad radio bit. You know who their uh, pro, uh, athletic director is, obviously. Thank you to President Hartzell, Chairman Eltife. And? Of course, my man, CDC. CDC. <laughs> That's uh, McConaughey's man, too. Bless the mood with CDC. And a guy who once upon a time, I think I was the board op. I don't think, uh, I think I'd moved up from the top ten, but Bad Radio was doing a show in Fort Worth. We're trying to get guests, and... They made Chris Del Conte, who was the program or the athletic director there at the time, available, and Gribble sold it to Bob and Dan with, uh, "He's really funny. He's really funny. You guys are gonna love him." So first of all, there's no chance the, <laughs> the athletic director is really funny. So we then took that to uh, cutting up every answer he gave and putting laugh tracks behind it, like <laughs> the a Seinfeld, Seinfeld theme. theme. Yeah, <laughs> Gribble's just sitting over there, so beaten. <laughs> Like, and the answers right. were, yes, They're we, uh, yeah. we look forward to We're playing. committed to culture. <laughs> 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 he was not that personality we'll filled. Make him funny. But no, he's... he also, and God, he sucks because he also was stolen away by Texas. Yeah. Right? And uh, had his set. Like, Texas, all they're doing is money whipping everybody. Mm-hmm. Chris Beard. If you can, then great. But don't act like. You know, you're anything. I don't know, man. It's just all the, oh, but the culture here and the tradition. The city of Austin. It has nothing to do with any of that. No. You got money whipped. Players or coaches, really. Yeah, for sure. The players, for sure. I didn't cut this part off. Did you see? He did say, like, there's the three most important things when recruiting. Number one, what's the quality of my diploma? And I'm like, well, that's horseshit. (laughs) Uh, Number two, uh, like, player development. I guess. Right. And number three, I think, might have been the city. Or, or, or winning in Omaha was number three. Like, okay. he made winning player the Player development last is probably one of the, the hop, you know, money, player development, because you want to develop to get more money. And in, you want to win. Pros. But uh, do you see CDC, though? The, reason, the other reason he sucks is because now he's, like, scoreboarding the rest of the world. Did you see he put out a uh, Twitter post of a cemetery? <laughs> do you know the story? No, I guess not. That apparently he knew he couldn't be seen in College Station on Tuesday. Ah, uh, so. So he uh, hung out at a cemetery, Snook Cemetery, for like three hours as Schloss was traveling back from the College World Series. Once they got back, he was there, and he drove to his house to uh, meet him. Um, yeah, that's, that's one really creepy and but two, he, but he tweeted out it. he yeah. tweeted out that picture with the horns up that Apple has somehow deemed it's worthy. Yeah, I think uh, they did something similar. Up, I think sorry. he did something Not similar horns. when they hired Chris Beard because they met halfway between Lubbock and Austin at a McDonald's, and people I think put together maybe they were seen there or something, but it was in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Okay, so and, that's why he had to yeah to and pick after, a cemetery. After they hired uh, Chris Beard, he, he, I believe, tweeted out a picture of the receipt from their meal at McDonald's. Like oh. two sandwiches and two coffees. Just like, yeah. You're, that's just yeah. lame. I definitely won't punch my wife. <laughs> 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 Forgot that part. Forgot to clear that part up. Blake Spin. This is, uh, hey. this is an interesting one. She broke his glasses, Dan. Oh, so you're just saying there was a reason. This is an interesting one. <laughs> in the reason he gave. In light of what... Uh, <laughs> 
we dealt Glasses with. Glasses are expensive with Blake today. These they days. really are. They really are. Thanks. Uh, Might have to go get thanks another Biden eye, eye exam. Biden did this. <laughs> so yes, like I said, this last clip uh, before the the real walk off is uh, great, considering what we dealt with with Blake today. Lastly, to the Longhorn fans, we need you. Please know that this is not a job for me. This is a lifestyle. Okay. I work. I don't play golf. Um, ah. I don't hunt or. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, look, I got nothing but work on my mind. I don't golf. Yeah. Here's Blake. Yeah. Blake's in a quick 12. <laughs> Let's golf before Sounds the show like a once. Real boring dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is before the show once, but it's also like the most technically difficult thing we've ever tried to pull off. Aww. So I don't. And look at us. We're just sailing. But at least <laughs> we are. At least you got right off the course and uh, just showed up here all sweaty, like just no. ready to. He smells great, actually, so no, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, you actually took I yourself did, I did a nice. That, I did that for y'all. Get a little steam. <laughs> Maybe a little massage. <laughs> Me and Kelly hung out. Yeah, in the sauna. A little steam. <laughs> All right, this is really long, and we don't have to play the whole thing, but obviously after he snapped at Texag's guy the other day, he immediately knew how bad that was going to print, and especially that he's already going to be public a-hole number one. Don't you think it's weird that he says that while no, Like, he knew. It's not like they just offered him the well, job Well, that's after. why he did it, because he knows deep down, like, I'm doing something that people are going to be really mad at me about so i'm going to overreact you know people do that all the time i think so hmm. just doth protest too much type thing you know yeah and i guess in the end it doesn't matter the check still cashes yeah but i also think he knew that it l looked really bad for him and probably a conversation with cdc happened where they thought you know we, we're gonna have to address this we're gonna get asked about it mm -hmm. um so here that is uh yeah coach last night olin buchanan texags.com Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Coach, uh, on Monday night, you said that you went to Texas A&M with the idea of it being a last job. And then you said that your, um, that your mind hadn't changed beyond that. So, number one, what changed? And then number two, what would you say to those uh, Texas A&M people that supported you that feels like that uh, you intentionally misled them? So, first of all, that's a much more pointed question than the one that he snapped at already. The other one was just... What do you have to say about this? Uh -huh. This one is like, what do you have to say to all the people that you screwed over? Yeah. Well, I didn't intentionally mislead them. Bullshit. And that's a very fair question for you to ask because that is what I said. Um, in that moment, that's exactly how I felt. No. At 50 years old, I, you got to understand, I, and Chris would probably back me up on this, I love TCU. I, my children grew up there. What happened? Fort Worth. I was there 18 years. Somebody pay you more? And it had to be a very unique situation for me to leave that unique. at 50 years old. Um, I love Coach Garrido, but I, and, I, and I hope I get to coach here for a long time. But I don't really have any plans on coaching to 75, 78 well, Last years week old. you said you had no plans of ever leaving so, Texas A&M. So. I made that choice because it aligned both personally and professionally Bingo. with what I had going on at the time. And I loved it. And I dove in with every single ounce of me to help A&M have the very best baseball program it can possibly have. And that investment lasted through the last pitch of the national championship game. What about the burners? It never wavered, not one second. I don't care what anybody says. So you can tell where he's, you know. Mm -hmm. Aligned is a bingo for these type of things. You got to use aligned. Their culture aligned with my core values. I heard core values about 10 times. One of, like his core, one of his once. core values is to, uh, when he leaves, he takes his entire coaching staff with him because he had three guys in a college station that now are in Austin. And Chris Beard did almost the same thing. A ton thing. of their players are in the portal now too, right? Yeah. Including like some of them that were tweeting out, I'd never leave here. And I'll die all these, for this team. All yeah. these other kids that are in uh, taking advantage of the portal is ridiculous. Like, yeah. And the, that's because they were kind of following their coach's lead, I think. Yeah. Like, oh, he's he's wagging his finger in the face of the media. Well, we should do that, too. It's all bullshit. I would just Every like one person, it, one person to right? ever <laughs> actually take less somewhere. Like, for all we hate uh, Alex Rodriguez – he actually was going to take less money to get traded away from the Rangers back in the day. He hated it now, that much. He had yeah. $250 million. He was going to take 210 or something. Yeah. Um, 
So it's like whatever my great 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 grandchildren won't go to college off of this, but you know everyone else will. Or you know that, but that could possibly happen. The second scenario on the flip side, it never would. It would also be really funny if it would definitely never happen in college. But if a coach walked out there and was like, "Look, I had a chance to make generational money by leaving the job that I said I'd never leave." Right, and that's I like what, it here, but I'm here because they're paying me more. That's the, someone say that. <laughs> that would be just fun say too. it because that's the truth. Yeah, and then it it would be fine, but. Uh, it's hard to say that. Then also, and then tell uh, kids, oh, you it's can't a culture. Just, you can't just go anywhere for nil. Yeah, you, you got to go here more. for this. Just like one press conference to say, like Josh Hamilton and his wife, the Angels did offer twenty million dollars less than Seattle, but this really felt like home. Yeah, like, but then they lied. Yeah, they had to say, well, God, they God had brought throw, us to Anaheim. They had to throw God under the bus. You have. She doesn't and that investment no, she doesn't. lasted through the last pitch of the national championship game. It never wavered, not one second. I don't care what anybody says. As Chris likes to say, we have jobs and try to run a business on other people's passion. All right, I don't know. I don't want to hear it. There's, he goes on for another minute and a half. Wait, on this, Chris says that? I don't know who Chris <laughs> says. That's, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, without it being called CDC, I was a bit thrown off and confused. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's that story. It's great. It's a great story. It, I love it. It is you know? great. And especially, and you love it because the Aggies got screwed. That they're, of course. They're going to be in the same conference now, is even better. Yeah. It's a fantastic college sports story. Oh, yeah.